Well, for generations, we've pretty much taken for granted if you come out of college, you get a terrific job and a fulfilling career. But how many kids do you know get out of college and have absolutely no idea what they want to do? The problem is, according to the author of The Power of Focus for College Students, is that they haven't discovered their passion. Welcome to the show, Andrew Hewitt. It's a pleasure to be here, Kim. Now, is it true, according to your book, roughly 47% of college students don't ever finish college and out of the remaining that do finish within five years 70 percent are dissatisfied with their careers that's right and what that means is that those who start college have a 16 percent chance of graduating and ending up in a career they enjoy what's the problem with the education system and this is huge it's like a college crisis it is the college crisis that's what i love to call it you know you look at the average student is spending $60,000 on their education and they have a 16% chance of that leading them to a degree and satisfaction in, in the career it leads them to. Mm -hmm. Scary odds and you know the, the, the question of you know what's the problem well it's a it's a deep hole um, however there obviously is a problem and that's what got me is as a student experiencing this problem got me into providing the solution as a solution was needed. Now tell us a bit about your background. You're, you're the, the son of a very successful motivational speaker, Les Hewitt, world-renowned. How did you begin to discover your passion? Great question. You know, my parents were great at giving me roots, but then also letting me explore life on my own, make my own mistakes, which I made many of um, along the way. Yet the values they instilled in me definitely led me down this path that I, I knew I had a purpose greater than just making money. And I guess it was in my genes a bit <laughs> in seeing my parents in the, the speaking profession and, and personal development that uh, it basically brought this information to me maybe a bit earlier than other people. Mm -hmm. And the best part was practicing these principles were giving me better results, bringing me to greater success, greater fulfillment than what I was learning in the classroom. And that's what made me want to share these principles with other students. Because you did go to college. I sure did, yeah. yeah. What did you actually study? Well, I started with this mindset that all I needed to do was get a 4.0 GPA, and I was going to get two degrees because a friend brother of mine told me just before going that if I got a finance degree, I would have the highest starting salary out <laughs> of all my friends, right? You've probably heard this story before. And that's what I did. So that's what I was pursuing, marketing and finance. And in my first finance internship, I totally bombed. I hated it. It was no fun, wasn't in line with who I really was, and that was a wake-up call. Mm -hmm. It wasn't as simple as just getting qualifications and going into industries that pay well, because if ultimately it's not aligned with who we are, we, we quit, we drop out, we fall asleep at our desks mm -hmm. and all these things. I've done that before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you actually were in college, did you start, you know, going to seminars and then uh, who were the, you know, inspirations in your life besides your parents? Well, what happened is I, I was given a book by my father for Christmas. And you can imagine this, you know, I'm a teenager, I'm materialistic, you know, all these things. And, that, and my dad gives me a book for Christmas. And I'm, I get this book and I'm like, are you serious? You know, <laughs> dad, I've got enough books to read. I'm in school. Didn't really appreciate it at the time. Yet I dove into that book and it was called Rich Dad Poor Dad. Ah, Robert Kiyosaki. Yeah, Rich Dad Poor Dad. <laughs> and it just blew my eyes open that basically the path I was taking, high paying job, was not the path to real wealth. And at that time, that was my focus, was I want to make a lot of money, I want to be successful. And that book in cold hard facts laid it out that a high paying job is not the ticket to true wealth. Mm -hmm. So for the first time, I had my formula switched around on me. And that's when I started studying ultra successful people. And was that a journey of self-discovery for your own passion? I mean, at what point did you say, I want to change the education system? Because that's what you're working on at the moment. Well, his book, Rich Dad Poor Dad, was certainly a catalyst for that, as he talks a lot about the education system and how it basically leads us into jobs, into high paying jobs. And, and that is not the path for everyone. It's a great path for some. However, entrepreneurial types like myself, um, it just wasn't a fit. So in having that experience and then trying his theories and buying properties and realizing I could make money 
outside of a job mm -hmm. in line with what I love to do, um, it, it gave me confidence. Mm -hmm. And by getting those results myself at a young age, I realized other students could do this too. And it frustrated me more than anything to see my friends who I really cared about go through the system and be pushed into jobs they, they didn't like. And they weren't in line with who they really are. And then years go by, and what do you do? Do you go back to school because you realize you don't like your career? Or, you know, they're spinning their wheels. And then here I am, I've taken a different path. I, I haven't worked a job since the finance internship I hated because I'm making money, uh, passive income streams that free up my time and allow me to really just pursue my passion full on. And you created the passion puzzle system as well. Tell, yes. us, tell us a little bit about that. Just the passion puzzle system is uh, a chapter in, in my book, The Power Focus for College Students. And the purpose of that is a really simple activity to help students and all people really piece together the components that lead to passion. You know, we get this word thrown out all the time, go after your passion, do what your passion, come on, we get that advice enough, but how do you do it? And this system was created uh, based on a lot of research and simplification so that people could take four steps and have a very clear perspective on what will give them passion. Defining the values, the interests, what, what are the yeah, you know, there's, dimensions? That there's four parts and the whole philosophy here is passion is an emotion that's created. It's not, it's not just a deep interest. And you create this emotion when you're in, uh, in a work environment that's in line with your values, your interests, uses your skills, and supports your ambitions. Mm -hmm. And when you discover those four things and, and you use this puzzle activity, they, they, they're staring at you. And it's pretty easy to tell if you're on the right path to using this and getting passion or if you're off track. And people can go to this website, passionpuzzle.com, and get free access to this, this uh, exercise? Yeah, passionpuzzle.com is awesome. totally free, and you can check it out. Fantastic. Let's take a short break, and when we come back, we'll hear about Andrew's rise to success from student to entrepreneur. We'll be right back. With us today is Andrew Hewitt, the author of The Power of Focus for College Students, which has sold the series close to a million copies. The amazing thing is Andrew is only 25 years old. How did you pull this off? Well, it really goes back to that whole topic of passion again, Keon, and it was finding something that just lit me up that I would be willing to do if I didn't get paid. And an activity that helped me with that was looking, envisioning the world in the way I'd like to see it and finding a way I can uniquely contribute my gifts and, and what I've experienced to helping create that vision. And for me, that was changing the education system, helping it evolve into a system that really teaches people and students in the next generation how to figure out who they really are, what their passion is, and how to pursue that. So that led to this book, and I was very fortunate to have parents in the industry, my dad, uh, co-wrote The Power of Focus. My mom did The Power of Focus for Women. And I never considered myself an author. It actually wasn't even my idea to write the book. It was uh, like my good friend and co-author Luke. Um, however, it was just this great opportunity to take this message, take this passion I had and, and get it out to the world. So um, it took about two and a half years of research uh, to really interview successful students, see what they did different from those 70% that end up in jobs they don't like. Uh, interviewing employers, uh, interviewing some of the most successful people around. What, what formula success did they use? Took all that research and that really made a difference because the publisher saw that and said, well, these just aren't a couple college kids with some idea. Uh, these guys have really done their homework and they found a problem that really does need solved and they are living examples of the solution. So that core story really helped get the book well, that's yeah. fascinating. And there's nothing, there was nothing really out there in the market like this, right? Covering from how to get a job, you know, the, most of the best jobs are not, you know, advertised from setting your goals, discovering your passion, the whole financial, you know, you know freedom, you know, the mm -hmm. steps to, to, to do that. 
what um, you must, I look in the, um, the back here, you've read a lot of books to put this and a lot of research to put this together. Um, you know, how can this make a difference for the average person who's like, I just want to get a job, you know? I mean, yeah. they're not necessarily thinking about passion necessarily. Well, in, in, in putting the book together, we read over 100 personal development books, the classics, and basically compiled that into uh, this book, you know, just under 300 pages. Mm -hmm. So how it can help someone is you don't have to read 100 books. You know, the, the stuff that really matters to this generation Y, this this age group in college or even just before college, uh, can be found in, in the student lingo. And what it does is it it really gets right to their core, and and they're they're now seeking careers and and uh, things that are related to something they're really passionate about versus just surface. Uh, interests such as money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I can, I can guess they can completely relate to your story and your, you know, the fact that you guys have been there, done that, yeah. and you're about the same age sort of thing as opposed to the gurus out there trying to give advice to the younger generation. Yeah. Now, interestingly from this, I mean, you have a phenomenal set of testimonials. How did you come across some of these people? You know, <laughs> I, the one that I love in particular is uh, Steve Irwin. Where is this? It's, oh, the I, Crocodile Dundee. The Lundry. Crocodile Dundee, obviously from Down Under. If you follow your greatest passion in life, you will be a success. And crikey, this book <laughs> may just help you unlock your biggest strengths. Have a go at this little beauty, will ya? How did you, how like that. How like did you meet this guy? How did you get his test? Steve Irwin, you know, it's practicing what I preach. In the book, we talk about thinking big. And I was given an assignment while I was a student in a program called University of Dreams. Great program. And the assignment was to interview someone who's incredibly passionate about what they do. So thinking big, I said, well, who's the most passionate person <laughs> in the world? And sure enough, Steve Irwin, like, this guy wrestles crocodiles. Yeah. So um, it really just started by asking and believing that that was possible. And cold calling uh, the San Diego Zoo or the San Diego the Australia Zoo mm -hmm. and got shut down. <laughs> <laughs> cold, like, persisting, as Jack Canfield says, when they say no, you say next. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did. And I uh, contacted his producer of his show. Uh, turned out he was in the Outpack. Um, in the 24 hours I had to contact him, kept persisting. Next thing you know, it's 5 a.m., I'm in Los Angeles, and I'm interviewing Steve Irwin on a satellite phone in the middle of nowhere on an outback about uh, how passion has helped him. Mm, fascinating. I'm, I'm sure he'll be uh, from looking above and blessing this. So mm. now, and then Donald Trump approached you, or, or you approached him. How did that, because you've got a, a series. This, this um, is it an audio series? Yeah, it's an audio course. With Trump University. Yeah. And, and it's, you've, it's, you've done a joint venture with him and Luke. How did this come about? Well, what started was um, asking our, ourselves a question. Who's the best person in the world to write the forward to the book? And it was Trump or Oprah. <laughs> <laughs> Being a big Apprentice fan, I uh, went with Trump. And, and the next question was, well, how in the world are we going to get Donald Trump to write the forward? and applied, you know, as people call it, the law of attraction, thinking big, and started visualizing it. I created a fake book cover, and I wrote Ford by Donald Trump <laughs> on the front, stared at it for a couple months. It was a crazy idea at first, but you know how the law of attraction works. Over time, when you get the belief up enough, you start attracting things to you. And it was one of those random things where people started being attracted, who had connections to Trump. And really, even, even with my parents' background, we had no connections to the organization um, and uh, got a call one day that put me in touch with Trump University. They loved the idea of the book. They passed it on to Trump and his people. And before long, had the phone call and he had written the forward and really believed in, believed in the message enough that he then enlisted us to create uh, Start Right, How to Launch a Great Career, which is a Trump University course. Oh, interesting. So it's a, it's a set of CDs and a 12-month online program as well. How can people get access to, to TrumpUniversity.com. Mm -hmm. um, is this, is the site or Amazon or any of those sites mm -hmm. distributed? Right. Terrific, terrific. And you know what went from the Trump experience? What other projects did you get involved with? I mean, the things are unfolding. You, you're a speaker. Mm -hmm. You're a motivational speaker. You don't want to call yourself a motivational speaker. <laughs> How do you want to define yourself when you're up on stage? Well, the mission from the get go was let's revolutionize the higher education system. Mm -hmm. So it's led in a variety of different ways. One is creating products, the other is speaking to groups. But I wanna do more than that, you know, we, I can only speak in front of so many people a year. So it's really about be, be creating a business that can have an impact on the world and spread beyond me. So I can just plant the seed 
and let it grow on its own is, is revolutions always form from the inside. So it's lighting that spark and letting the fire continue. And that's my purpose, is to really help create that change. Fascinating. If you've just joined us, we're here with Andrew Hewitt, the young entrepreneur extraordinaire out to change and transform the education system. We'll be right back after the short break. Welcome back to The New Millionaire. We're here with Andrew Hewitt, author of the best-selling book, The Power of Focus for College Student and Wood Trump University, Start Right, How to Launch a Great Career. He's here to ignite the passion in students all around the world to discover their passion and to make a difference. Andrew, tell us about your vision, your dream about what could be in terms of the education system, because it is a broken system to a degree, if only 15% or whatever actually graduating with something they really love to do. Yeah, well, it's a big question, isn't it? And I know a lot of people have asked themselves that question. How can we transform the education system? The first part I looked at was, you know, where's the weakest link? And because everything funnels into higher education, until higher education shifts, the, the schools underneath are stuck funneling in. True. And we've seen innovative high schools form, middle schools form, elementary schools. However, they're still spent is spending 80% of their time on curriculum, getting grades, teaching styles that have been proven to be, you know, have a very little effect on actual retention and, and real learning. Just in, what is it? Just in time versus just in case? <laughs> yeah, I like to call it just in case education. And particularly in, in college where we're learning things just in case we're gonna need them. And that method is, is the lowest way to retain information. When we're learning it just in time, when there's a reason for that student to use it, and they're connecting it, and they're experiencing it, they retain it and they remember it. So the, the vision for the education system, or at least a component of it, is to switch to a just in time, a more mentorship-based system. So what do you know, students really need in terms of life skills? Give, give us an example, and, and you mentioned, you know, affect the higher, higher education system first. So what specifically are you going about you know, to do that to achieve those goals? Great question. And starting with the higher education system, it's a bureaucracy. There's a lot of barriers. Some people have gone out and they've tried to just create new universities, which have worked to some effect. Um, however, I like the idea of change from within. And 
my mentors have taught me that you can't just create demand for something. You know, a lot of people still have the mindset the system works just fine because mm-hmm. when they went through it, it did. So the programs I'm rolling out um, are all based on uh, programs that, that universities can use within. So they're retention-based programs. Most universities have a huge problem with dropout rates. It's 40, 40, 47%. Yeah, so 47% dropout. Mil, tens of millions of dollars in lost revenue. So Ten, Yeah, on average, it's $10 million lost revenue per year per school. So this program, uh, Focus Student that I deliver, is based on helping them retain more students. And the students now get this content that can really help them lead towards a, a passionate career. Uh, in some ways, aren't you trying to tell people, oh, you don't need college, or do they need college, and why should they finish college, and what should the experience be for I, them? I, you know, my byline in my book is how to make college the best investment of your life. I do feel it can be the best investment, but it's how you approach it. So the content that I share is helping students have a different mindset, an experience-focused mindset, because college provides this amazing wealth of opportunities. So by, by having that mindset, they really can make it a phenomenal investment. And yes, it's worth the finish if they follow that approach. I mean, personally, when I went through college or university in Australia, that's what they call it, you know, I really didn't want to be you know, in finance or actuarial at the time mm-hmm. for the rest of my life. How would, you know, what are you implementing in the universities? Had your system that you're rolling out or is already in operation been around, what would have I experienced, I guess? What, what you would experience in your first year is you had been introduced to a program that's helping you develop this, what I call the experience-focused mindset, that shows you the value of doing exchange programs, getting involved on campus, getting leadership skills, looking at your classes different as a way to actually learn and get experience versus just getting good grades and and eventually it means to an end your degree. Um, And they would have that mindset from the start. And they'd also be developing uh, relationship skills, how to build great relationships. They'd be learning about money, which is amazing that the topic of money isn't explored in school. So they'd be developing a foundation that any ultra successful person will tell us that is, is essential. And uh, that's what would they be getting off the bat. And the value of that for the school is that um, studies have shown that when students connect education to what they really want in their life, they stay in the system. Interesting. So I mean, I you know, at many times I thought I'm going to drop out. I'm going to drop mm-hmm. out. But you kind of like invested all your life getting to college, and what you know, we didn't have these seminars. Or is it a seminar? Or is it a coaching program? What? How is it delivered? It's a it's a program that starts with a, a workshop, a, a live presentation by myself on that campus, and it follows monthly. So I don't believe in motivation and and the smoke and mirror routines because you you walk away from a two hour workshop and you forget it all the next day. So it's a long term implementation process. It's, it's actually a complete focusing system that students are using on a weekly basis. And with technology these days, you can create an internet presence and keep in touch with students and so on and so forth. Exactly. That's exactly it. And uh, what website can people go to to find out more about this? If um, they want to introduce it to their universities or whatever. Yeah, the best thing to do is just shoot us an email at info at focusedstudent.com. Info at focusedstudent.com. We'll put that on the website. Perfect. And um, so, you know, from this, is this a, a new business that you're, you're starting or, you know, who, who else has been involved with this? This is the evolution of all the work I've done in taking it from just being a speaker and having products and CD albums to a system that's scalable, that can be on all campuses regardless of where I am. And so it's, it's really an evolution of all the work that has been done to date and, and, being, and getting these amazing testimonials and proving these concepts work and really create results. There are some people already doing something similar, right? And they've, they've already had how many tens of thousands of students going through a similar program? Yeah, there's, been, uh, there's only one other company that we found teaching similar content. They've had 85,000 students go through the program and they've effectively um, reduced the dropout rate by 30%. 30%. So it's saving universities a lot of money. And who this who is, pays for that? Is it the student or is it the actual university? It's the college? university. Oh, okay. Because they're, they're getting direct results, re- reduction in, 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 um, in cancellations or dropouts. Yeah, exactly. So there's real dollars and cents for the university. And better yet, it's free for the students. Mm, interesting. It's free for the students completely. Yeah. So it's, it's not, is it a mandatory thing or is it like optional? It's optional. Okay, so that, that's interesting because uh, a lot of people, they may not want it and others probably do. Yeah, what's amazing is this company we're modeling after, they have an 80% uptake rate. So after informing the students of what's possible, 80% enroll. And it's this generation wide, this generation I come from, 
we're we're pretty um, enthusiastic. We're pretty outgoing. We're independent type thinkers. We're looking for this type of education. We don't want to be stuck in the box. Yeah. So this is why they're so interested. A long days are gone with you know being a this or that for the 30, 40 years like our parents were or whatever. But uh, it, it's fascinating if we can make an impact at that level. I mean, certainly a lot of people who are dissatisfied, they kind of, once they're out in the workforce, this is what happened to me, I'm sure a lot of other people, they start going to seminars, read books, and then they quit their jobs and so yeah. on. But I wish we had this education a lot earlier. Now, what other things, you know, are you working on to, to you know, create this vision of yours? Are, are there other people that you know, you're bringing other partners into the program, other well-known speakers or, or whatever? How, how are you going to basically f duplicate you, mm -hmm. you know, Andrew Hewitt, so that there are other uh, inspirational, you know, speakers out there and help create the system? Well, the education system that I've used, it's, I can only share from my own experience, it's led me to where I am today, is mentorship. So yes, there is a big part of this is bringing on mentors, bringing on successful people that students aspire to mm -hmm. and having them be the teachers. Professors have a very important role in society in, in, in providing great research. They, they study things, they bring about information. It's very important for us to know as a culture. However, they're not paid based on their teaching. They don't have a motivation to be good teachers. It's not their fault. It's just the way the system's created. But successful people in their heart want to give back they want to share their their success and, and you know big dogs like helping little dogs so a big part of it is bringing in mentors the successful people on this planet to help inspire the next generation and then through your program you'll find new leaders emerging and, and being part of that program you got it. as well and that's when you light the match and the fire expands yeah, interesting now how would you what what's your focus in the next six to twelve months What's your main focus over the next uh, next year or so? The main focus over the next year is getting campuses on board with this program and getting some real tangible studies done that we can take this to the whole another level. Interesting. Well, I wish you all the best, and you must come back and tell us how it all goes, and you know, perhaps in a year's time. Yeah, my pleasure, Kian. Yeah, thanks for joining us. My name is Kian Wong. Thanks for watching the New Millionaire. Take care. We'll see you soon.